all right all right welcome again today i will start a series that is quite important and would impact you if you can uh, connect with it and practice some of this stuff it would impact your marriage it's it's something that i've noticed over the years that i've helped people that it, whenever i tell them to hold your tongue uh there's a dramatic change in the situation of the marriage and with that change we can then work on what needs to be worked on so if you have been enjoying the good things that we have been doing here on the on the channel and you are not yet a subscriber please do subscribe and for all our subscribers i i celebrate you and uh, please whenever you are online do not hesitate to leave a comment or ask a question it helps me to know exactly what to talk about next all right what i've noticed when i've talked with people in uh, my work and my in uh, I work, when i work with my clients one thing that i've noticed is whenever i tell them to ignore what they want to speak for about a week usually i encourage you to do it for a month if you can but i always start with one week so that i can see how how um damage or how bad the situation is and what i do tell them is what i call the love experiment the love experiment and i do that to say that if you can go seven days without doing certain things and doing certain things that i'm going to list out in a couple of minutes and your marriage it remains stable like neutral your husband or your wife is neutral or they respond positively after seven days then your marriage has hope of being repaired if you try these things for seven days and your marriage goes worse then um we need to reevaluate that marriage and reevaluate how you're doing the experiment and see if there's any hope in that marriage and and the love experiment takes care of the words the, the tongue it's it, its goal its goal is to make you hold your tongue so that you don't say words that can cause more harm while while you are learning to observe the things that cause pain for your spouse and you also try to learn how to speak about what you don't like um but just by saying one word what i usually tell people to do is when for one week try not to complain about anything in your marriage regardless of what your wife does or your husband does do not complain and what that means is to not use your words to speak and create negative atmosphere in your home not only no complain no correction either don't correct if you find that, that your husband or your wife has put the plate in the wrong place do not correct them just either move it if it's giving if it's troubling you or leave it there for one week it's not going to be the end of the world we're trying to say hold your tongue for one week and see the difference and many times the people report that the marriages were better or neutral in other words no arguments no name callings even in marriages where it was often no um negative interaction and exchanges why because we shut down one person's uh, flow of exchange such that the other person then realizes that i i don't need to do these things if i if my partner is not engaging with me in the negatives if you can just hold your peace and do the love experiment for one week you will notice that you are creating an atmosphere for change now that is not the solution to a marital problem that's just for us to check if there's hope not only that it also helps you to know that you can create a an atmosphere that is a bit more healthy so that you can work on the things that you need to work on and trust that god will use you to inspire your spouse to work on the things that she needs to work on 
Words can destroy nations. Words can destroy friendships. Words can cause someone to become so broken that they commit suicide. When you speak words, those words have life. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So we want the words that we speak to create life, to give joy, to give peace and hope to those who we speak to. But it's not so easy to, to get to speak the right words. So I always like to start with holding back the words that you speak. So it's better to be silent than to speak negative words. But something that is better than silence is enriching, edifying, comforting words. So we are on a journey to speak the right words, but before we can even attempt to speak the right words, we must learn to hold the tongue, to hold the tongue, to control our tongues, control the words that you speak. If you learn to control your tongue, you'll be amazed at what will happen in your marriage. There are many times that I, I've learned that when you speak words, what your spouse hears is not necessarily what you're saying. What your wife hears when you speak is not what you intend to say. Many times she hears what she's programmed to hear by her uh, experiences. And the same with you. If your tongue is let loose, it can do great devastation to things around. And we all must have experienced words that people have spoken to you that hurt you so much. And sometimes that even brought more devastation. Not just that the words hurt, they also create an atmosphere or an idea about you that hurts you, that hurts some your program, your business, your career. Words can be so devastating. So if you're going to have a great marriage, you need to learn how to hold your tongue. And when I mean hold your tongue is do not speak, even when it makes a lot of sense to say something um, in your opinion, or it's you need to really explain things. And here are a few things that we usually talk about that I would like to hold your tongue. Number one, and that's what we have in our love experiment. Number one is complaints. Hold your tongue to complain. Do not allow complaints to come out of your mouth. The next one is correcting, trying to correct, especially when you're correcting your spouse. It makes them feel that they're not smart enough. It makes them feel that they are less than you, even when you don't intend to do that. Hold your tongue from demanding things. What's a demand? A demand is when you command someone to do something, and if they don't do it, you try to punish them, either with words or with actions. Hold your tongue with comments also. Um, when I mean comments is making a directive as if you are somebody's boss or someone's owner. You want to make sure that your words come out as a request. Your word comes out as um, instructions or uh, reminders, not as commands. So when we learn to hold our tongue to some of these things, it opens up the opportunity for transformation in our marriages. May the Lord bless you, increase you, strengthen you, give you great grace to hold your tongue when you need to, and great grace to speak words that edify when you need to. All right? May the Lord bless you until we meet again. Continue to love like Jesus and make mega impact.